for tonight's basketball game between the Mockins Trojans and the Minnesota Wildcats. I'm Jeff Henson. Alongside me tonight is Dave Helmstetter. We have a feature tonight between the Trojans out of the Shelby County Athletic League and the Wildcats out of the Midwest Athletic Conference. Dave, the Trojans already playing their 11th game. They're four and six overall, having a tough stretch right now. Yeah, the uh, they're looking to pick up a victory. They've dropped their last uh, last three games, and but the funny part about Botkins is uh, that they've had six losses this year, but all by eight or less points. So obviously a very competitive ball ball team, and what looks to be a nice matchup tonight. Yeah, Coach Myers team just a few points away from having a much better record. Now on the other side, Minster Wildcats they come in three and three. They're off to a decent start. They've had played a tough schedule, but have, have won half their games. Minster got off to a great start, beating St. Henry in a league game, put them in a in in a great frame of mind. They've won their last two out of their last three, uh, and they really need a win tonight to pick up momentum as they hit the heart of the Midwest Athletic Conference schedule. Yeah, it should be a good game. Both these teams very even on paper. So we'll take a break when we come back. Well, the starting lineups and the opening tip here on NK Telco Sports. Visit the Bunker Restaurant at Arrowhead Golf Course and enjoy the relaxing views, amazing sunsets, and cold refreshments from our spacious dining room or patio. We invite you to stop out during the week or on the weekend for our unique Friday and Saturday specials that are hand-picked weekly by our executive chef. Enjoy our unique sauces, hand-breaded specialty meats, locally grown beef and pork, and delicious desserts that will tantalize any taste bud. Dine in or call ahead for larger parties. You'll be surprised what is new at the Bunker. Get all the latest technology gifts for the people on your holiday list at Radio Hospital. LG Ultratone, only $49.99. iPad Air, only $249.99. When you add Verizon Internet, get the people on your list what they really want. All the latest wireless technology from Radio Hospital. When you choose Radio Hospital for your wireless needs, you get 13 convenient locations, no waiting in long lines, premier service after the sale, and all the latest technology. At Radio Hospital, we are neighbors serving neighbors. My name is John Kramer. I am 90 years old. I've decided that it was time for me to go to assisted living. I lived by myself for 14 years. I knew I was getting older and life was harder to live. I fell down a couple times at home. I decided that Elmwood was the place for me to go. It's like a family in here. Choose Elmwood. I believe it. <laughs> Welcome back to Minster as we get ready for the starting lineups. First for the Botkins Trojans under head coach Brett Meyer. Aaron Fullenkamp wears number four. He averages four and a half points a game and pulls down three rebounds. Number 14 is Eric Grevy, averaging just under 11 points and five rebounds. Number 22 is Cameron Flora. Eight points a game and five rebounds. Nolan Grevy wears number 30. He averages four and a half points a game and two rebounds. Chad Bergman wears number 42, averaging just under seven point or just under 17 a game and just under 10 rebounds. Rounds out the starting lineup for the Trojans. Again, coached by Brett Meyer, assisted by Ryan Gutman and JV coach Brad Bergman. And now for the home team tonight, the Minster Wildcats, under head coach Mike Lee. Bryce Smeezing wears number 10. He averages just over seven points a game and three rebounds. Number 14 is Jacob Stepsholl. He averages just over six a game and two rebounds. Peter Falk wears number 22. He averages 11 points a game and three rebounds. Aaron Ernst wears 24. He averages 8.3 a game and three rebounds. Connor Toombush is number 30, averaging just under four points a game and pulling down four rebounds. Wildcats are coached by Mike Lee. And there is your starting lineups. And before we see our opening tip, we'll go through our keys to the game tonight, brought to you by Budge Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Salina, where the dealer makes the difference. Taking a look at Botkin's keys for the game tonight, uh, you know, maintaining uh, 
stop maintaining composure. That's the number one key. Uh, and uh, also, we want to, they need to make sure that they limit Minster's transition game. For, for Minster, they need to utilize that speed and quickness they have, and also their ability to uh, penetrate and drive to the basket. Thank you, and those game is underway now. We had a re-tip here. I'm Jeff Henschen. Alongside me tonight is Dave Helmstetter. We're set here for this Monday night high school basketball action between the Trojans and the Wildcats. Bikins with the first possession wearing the road jerseys and black with the gold numbers trimmed in white. Minster will wear the home whites with black numbers trimmed in orange and the first turnover of the game will be committed against the Trojans, a travel violation. One of the keys to the game, or one of the important uh, players in this game, uh, is uh, Chad Bergman, who averages, as you said, Jeff, 16.9, solid rebounder, uh, with just a little bit under 10 rebounds a game. It'll be interesting to see how Minster can handle him. Three-point shot by the Wildcats. Missed and rebounded by the Trojans, and they hustle down the floor and try to work in transition. They get into the man you just mentioned, Dave, Chad Bergman, and not only is he averaging nearly double-double, he's shooting very well from the field. Shooting 56% from the field. He is fouled by the Wildcats' Jacob Stetscholdy. And Bergman hits the first of two. He's a 65% foul shooter on the season, hitting on 49 of 75 free throws coming into tonight's game. And he calmly makes both, and the first two points belong to the Trojans. And the Wildcats will go back to work on offense. They are a good three-point shooting team as Stetscholdy misses on that one. Coming into the ball game, Minster hitting on 49% of their three-point shots, Dave. They've really stroked the ball well from the outside. Yeah, they've, they've shot well from three-point range, and their opponents tonight, Botkins, are just the opposite. They haven't shot very well from outside at all, so a big advantage for the Wildcats. Nice ball movement by the Trojans. Turnaround jumper up and in by Cameron Flora. Bikins has had nice ball movement in all three possessions. They've scored on two of them. And Wildcats back to work. Looking for their first points of the ball game. Aaron Ernst over to Smeezing, over to Stetschel, who finds room on the baseline, cut off and will kick out to Smeezing. Three-point shot, no good. Offensive rebound, put back, up and in. Bryce Smeezing, second chance points for the Wildcats, and they dent the scoreboard as we near the six-minute mark, and there is a turnover by the Trojans. So the Minster full-court press, Dave, committing another or a second turnover against the Trojans. Yeah, Minster loves to keep the the tempo up, uh, like to play the fast defense or you know the fast-paced style of game, and uh, that's the way they play it. Pull-up jumper by Stetscholdy, rattles home. So four quick unanswered points. That answers Bakken's four unanswered, and we're knotted up at four apiece. Pulling camp, brings the ball down the court for the Trojans. Bakken's four and six on the season. They're on a three-game losing streak. They've lost, as we mentioned earlier, six games by no greater than eight points. So they've been very competitive. The interior pass is knocked away. Turnover committed by the Trojans. Three-point shot off the mark by Stetschold. And in transition to the other end goes Greeby. His layup is missed. So good idea by Greeby going to the basket, Dave, but just too strong on the layup. Yeah, Minster's keeping this game flowing very fast. And one thing, Botkins, three turnovers already. We talked about it yep. a little bit about the number of turnovers that they've had this year. And they're averaging just a little bit less than 15 a game. And they're on target for that. Foul is on Botkins, number 30, Nolan Greeby. Free throws for the Wildcats, number 22, Peter Falk, 6'1", senior. Struggling this year from the free throw line, hitting just 7 of 21. Hits his first one to give the Wildcats their first lead of the game, 5 to 4. Peter Falk is their leading scorer on the season, averaging just over 11 points a game. And that one on the mark, but rattles out 
And another turnover following the rebound. Stutschold, he shot no good. Offensive rebound, missed. Another offensive rebound, missed. Another offensive rebound is blocked. So three looks for the Wildcats. They come up empty. And on the other end of the court, Stet Scholey will pick up the personal foul. A couple people into the ball game for the Wildcats. And at last possession was number 12, Josh Nixon. Brett Holscher, number five, into the ball game for the Wildcats right now, along with number 32, Jared Toby. Interior pass to the Trojans is missed. I believe it was floor number 22. They had a good look, came up empty, and Wildcats cough it up. So they turn the ball over quickly, and Bikins gives it right back. So a lot of action here, a lot of aggressive play. Minster turnover will give it back to the Trojans. So each team in this season of giving, Dave, has been very... <laughs> giving this far in this first four minutes of action. Got a flurry of turnovers here in the uh, first four minutes of this game. There's a drive to the basket. Falk tried to take the charge. Aaron Fullenkamp will be credited with the basket as Falk picks up the block foul underneath the basket. So Aaron Fullenkamp averaging 4.6 points a game. 58% free throw shooter makes good on the three point play and Bakken's back up top on top seven to five. Holscher gives it over to Josh Nixon. Bakken's trying to do some trapping half court. Finds an open shooter in Brett Holscher. His three pointer no good. And Nixon comes up with the offensive rebound. So Dave, Wildcats have been very aggressive on the glass. They're pounding it pretty good. Definitely have a, a large advantage over here in the uh, rebounding. And they commit the turnover. We mentioned the large advantage, but the one trip, I think they had three or four shots at it, came up empty. So although they got the rebounds, they didn't convert. And Botkins on the other end quickly goes into Mr. Offensive player for them, Chad Bergman, and he banks it home. Early go, it's a 6-2 six to six to two rebounding edge for Minster. Turnover on the Wildcats, and that... We probably have a healthy number of turnovers day for each team. Yeah, that's a fourth turnover for Minster, and uh, Wildcats normally, what was it, eight, nine? Yeah, eight or nine, and Botkins has committed probably at least as, as many, four, and they're averaging close to 15 a game. Yeah, we've got five turnovers for Botkins and four for Minster here in the first quarter. Interior pass, batted away, stolen by the Wildcats. Nixon running the offense. Underhand scoop shot, no good. Offensive rebound by Ernst is missed, and it comes back out, and the Wildcats will fire a deep three by Smeezing. It is missed, an offensive rebound by Ernst. So another flurry of offensive rebounds. Aaron Ernst comes up with the second chance basket. And going to the basket are the Wild or the Trojans and the Wildcats commit the foul. That first foul, the foul will go against Jared Hulsman, number 40. Boy, a lot of activity, Dave. You mentioned the, you've seen Minster play once already, so you kind of had a flavor, I believe, of what to expect, and they've been up and down the court. But I tell you what, Botkins is also trying to push it quite a bit, and everybody is trying to get it inside, so that's, uh, that's quite a... There's not a lot of outside shooting. It's to hammering it home to get that shot inside. Luke Bergman, number 24, connects on both free throws. It's 11-7 in favor of the Trojan. Nixon all the way on an assist from Ernst. Number 12, Josh Nixon, a 5'11 senior. Gives Minster their ninth point. Minster likes to switch defenses up and they do the trap and Got to get an easy bucket there from Aaron Ernst. Well, they force another Bikings turnover. And they convert it into points. Quickly down the court, the Trojans go, and they answer nicely in transition on a bucket from Eric Grevy. And Toby missed the first shot for Minster. Then I believe it was Nixon had another look at it. I hope you have enough ink in your pen, Dave, as there's a lot of uh, 
movement and activity, and we still have just under two minutes to play here in this first eight-minute quarter. Yeah, there's a lot of lots of actions, and, and and you look at turnovers, and I've got Botkins with seven here in the quarter. Minster has four. Uh, rebounding, uh, Minster has a sizable advantage. Uh, looks like it's about 10 to two so far. And I know Minster's had a couple chances on the offensive end where they've converted at least two of those into four points. So they have utilized their offensive rebounding to some extent. Botkins does have the 13 to 11 lead. Pull up jumper from the foul line by Polk. Yep, no good offensive rebound and basket by Eric Grevy. So Botkins giving Minster a little bit of a dose of their own medicine with the offensive board. Aaron Ertz picks up the Minster foul, his first, and trying to convert the second three-point play of the quarter for the Trojans is Eric Grevy. 73% free throw shooter on the season, connects. So Botkins has had two, if you will, old-fashioned three-point plays. Slashing to the basket as Falk, his shot is missed. Rebounded by the Trojans, and they turn it over. Aggressive play, if not, I should say it's held on to by the Trojans as Flora's shot is missed. Rebounded by Grevy, his shot is missed. So Minster quickly down the court with the basketball trailing by five. And Falk is fouled. Peter Falk found an opening underneath the basket. Made the hoop and got fouled. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. Nice pass that time, and uh, Falk converts. That's uh, his first bucket and three attempts. And you know the pace. I'm a little surprised at how fast Botkins wants to go with it as well. Uh, I mean, we've seen Minster play before, so they like the up-tempo. But uh, Botkins doing a nice job in uh, penetrating as well. Falk will try to make the 14th Minster point. He gets a shot to drop. He's two for three from the free throw line here in the first quarter. Again, man-to-man -man pressure by the Wildcats. Ryan Egbert, number three, into the ball game for the Trojans. His cross-court pass is stolen. Connor Tumbush was there to steal it. He drives to the basket, lays it up, lays it in. Connor Tumbush gets the steal on one end, Dave, and they credit him with the basket on the other end. And another turnover on the Trojans. They might hit 15 in the first quarter. Spotting up for three from the corner. Nixon's shot no good. Offensive rebound will stay with the Wildcats. Mentioned Dave, Wildcats coming in from three-point range, shooting just under 50%. They haven't hit a three-pointer this quarter, and they fired up a number of them, but they've been very efficient on getting second-chance opportunities following that missed shot. Minster just plays a very aggressive style of play, and they're they're really hustling out there, and both teams are. It's kind of yes. for an unusual night for a game on a Monday. Uh, both teams really going at each other pretty good here in the first eight minutes. Going strong to the basket, and quickly landed in with his left hand, Bryce Smeezy. And the Wildcats on a very offensive quarter on top 18 to 16. Offensive foul committed against Nolan Grevy. Hustling down the court, taking the charge, I believe it was number five, Brett Holscher. It's always a tough call. You, you try to get your defense in time, and that time, Grevy, maybe just a little bit too much contact straight on. Holscher gets credit for taking the charge. That's the aggressive nature of the way this game is, is developing here in the first quarter. Uh, he took the ball to the basket, and that's what's been happening most of this quarter. Another three-point shot from the corner by Smeezy, no good, and at the buzzer, the desperation shot falls short. We've completed eight minutes of basketball with your score, Minster 18, Botkin 16. We'll be back with second quarter action here on NK Telco Sports. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Bob from the Keyhole, located on 66. 
We've been family owned and operated for 30 years. Personally, I think we still make the best pizza in the area. I use a special sausage. Cut fresh ingredients, shred cheese every day. We didn't make a pizza to make a profit. We made a pizza the way we wanted to eat it. Stop in, try us out, dine in, or carry out. We also have karaoke every other Saturday. Welcome back to Mincer as we get ready for second half action. It was a very entertaining first eight minutes of basketball. Both teams up and down the court. Minster on top by two, 18 to 16. First quarter filled with some very aggressive play. A lot of turnovers by each team and another one here to start the second quarter. Yeah, there's quite a few turnovers. Uh, Botkins had 11 in the first quarter. That, and uh, Minster had five in the, the opening quarter. And of course, number six just took place. We've seen both teams really push the tempo and maybe Botkins has maybe run more offense at least if you're a shot clock oriented, they've consumed more of the shot clock, but not so much. And Minster's been very grappling on offense. One thing about Botkins, they've done a nice job at the free throw line, six out of six. Taking care of business. They've, that aggressive style, that's helped them stay in this ball game here early. Both teams working hard on defense. And there's a travel violation as Shuffling his feet along the baseline is Eric Grevy. So we played almost 60 seconds, and each team has committed a turnover. Stet Scholey straight to the basket. Challenged there was Chad Bergman. Did a nice job, did Bergman, avoiding the foul, going straight up. Stet Scholey misses the shot, and Bakins gets the rebound. And they face, again, a very tight Minster defense. Chad Bergman, definitely the tallest player on the court tonight. Probably goes about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Flora shot no good, and it's battled, and it will stay with the Trojans. As Minster, you look at their lineup. They've got a lot of guys right around the 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, height, and Chad, uh, Bergman, the tallest player. They get into him right there, and he does a nice spin move and goes to the bucket, misses the shot. A rare miss for Bergman, and then trying to get their offensive rebound, Egbert steps out of bounds, so team rebound will go to the Wildcats, and we're scoreless here the first minute and a half, Dave, after an aggressive start to the game this second quarter, start off somewhat slow. One of the things in the first quarter, uh, despite the height by Chad Bergman, Minster did a good job on the boards. They had him out rebounded 11 to six, so Minster very aggressive inside. And I wonder, I don't know if Bergman played the whole quarter. I'm almost saying he sat out some as pulling up with a nice jump shot as 5'9 senior Jacob Stetscholdy. Minster now their biggest lead at four. Trojans break the press and they get a layup at the other end. Nice pass. Grevy catches it and lays it in. Grevy with seven points. Averaging just under 11 on the season, and Minster wasting no time. Goes back to work offensively. Aaron Ernst, a 6'1 junior, with his sixth point. Three out of five from the field for Ernst. Loose ball will be stolen. Turnover committed by the Trojans. Nixon pulls up off glass and in. And the pace is getting uh, good Next time for a timeout, I would think. Well, they get a break there as Nixon commits the foul. And they'll go to the line, Dave, where they've been very successful. They'll be in the bonus the rest of the half. They'll have a chance here to score without someone in their face. Well, Minster's half court, really their full court defense, which turns into half court, is pretty much in your face. Not much breathing room. He, he plays a good number of players, and they like that tempo. And Well, again, you look at their size, there isn't really... Any large athletes for the Minster team. A lot of guys, 6'1", 5'11". Maybe, maybe built more to run, if you will, than to slow it down. A first free throw missed by the Trojans. Minster with the rebound. They go back to work on offense. Falk in a bind, finds an open receiver on the outside. Minster, again, good ball movement. They settle for a three-pointer from Stetscholey, and that is off the mark. 
So again, for a team shooting very well from three-point range, Dave, Mr. I believe, has not made their first three-point basket yet. Still looking for the first one as they go inside that time to Bergman. Bergman now with six points. That cuts the six-point lead to four in favor of Mincer. Left-handed three-pointer by Peter Falk off the mark. Nice job rebounded by Luke Bergman. His long court pass is tracked down by Grevy, and they will reset their offense as both teams hustle back to play five on five. Grevy, a little bump off the mark as he was hoping for a whistle, didn't get it. In transition, Nixon able to run it down, kicks back out. Another three-point shot for the Wildcats. This time, Stetscholi hits the three-point shot. And we have a timeout on the court, a full timeout. We'll take a timeout with them as Bikings calls their first timeout. We'll be back with more basketball on NK Telco Sports. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Coach Meyer takes his first time out as his team now trails by seven following the three-point basket by Stetscholdy. And his team will need to get their offense back in track as they're having trouble getting the ball across the court as Jacob Roberts, number five, into the game for the Trojans. And Luke Bergman loses the handle. Again, credit that one strictly to the Minster defense. That was just con Continuous pressure from the time the ball was put into play. They, they love to do the trap and the double teams and things like that. It doesn't hurt here in the second quarter that the Wildcats have hit their four out of their first seven shots. Ernst make it five out of eight. A good start to this second quarter as we are un, or just under the halfway mark and nearly a turnover by the Trojans. And now they will reset up, try to get back into their offense. In the first quarter, they scored 16 and have only scored four here in the second quarter. Roberts' shot was blocked, rebounded by the Trojans, so they will try to cash in here. This will be their third look at the basket with Chad Bergman going to the free throw line. This is the 53rd meeting all time between these two schools. Minster leads the all time series, 33 wins against 19 losses. In the last 10 meetings, Minster owns an eight and two mark. Minster won last year's contest by two, 48 to 46 at Botkins. So Bergman connects on both free throws. He has eight points. The lead goes back to seven. One of the uh, keys for Botkins is to keep their players fresh. I mean, Minster has a rotation and now I see Botkins has gone into a, looks zone like a defense. two, three zone. Smeezing for three, count it. Smeezing came into the game hitting eight out of 10 three-point shots, a very good three-point shooting percentage. And there's a personal foul, so Minster kind of doing Bakins a bit of a favor, Dave, by fouling them. This will be their ninth team foul. Still three minutes to go. Minster six out of nine in the second quarter, hitting their first two threes of the, of the, uh, of the game, too. Free throw is good by Aaron Fullenkamp. Fullenkamp now with three points. 58% free throw shooter on the season. These are big shots for the Trojans. Able to score without the pressure of the Minster defenders in their face. That one is missed, rebounded by the Wildcats, and Nixon brings it up for the Cats. And quickly, good ball movement again. Already six passes, and...
Ernst off the mark, offensive rebound by Holscher, and his shot was blocked. Trojans come away with the rebound, and now in a bit of a bind, they're able to cross the timeline and go to work. Grevy loses the handle. Body's on the floor, and it is still with the Trojans. So good hustle play by both teams getting after it. It will stay underneath the basket with the Trojans. Luke Bergman, number 24 for the Trojans. Also Peter Falk for the Wildcats coming in at the break, as well as Jacob Stepsholdy, number 14. Wildcats have outscored the Trojans 14 to seven here in just about the first six minutes of action in the second quarter and deflected ball goes off of a Trojan, another turnover. It's funny, as aggressive as Minster was on defense, that time it was really not a pressure. Uh, that, yeah, there, there wasn't any pressure on the defender that time or on the offensive player. Zone defense, as Dave mentioned, a couple possessions ago. And this could really be good or it could be really bad for Botkins. <laughs> well, they get a turnover. And like you said, they're trying to do whatever they can to slow down a pretty hot Minster team right now. And going strong to the basket is Grevy, and he is fouled. So Eric Grevy, senior forward, forward, will go back to the free throw line. He came into the game, Dave, at 73% from the line. I believe he's already attempted a few tonight. Yeah, Grevy's, uh, well, he's three out of five from the field, and he's one for one at the line and make it two for two. Jared Toby back in for the Wildcats. Grevy to pull his team back to within nine. Make that seven. 32-25. Just under two minutes to go until halftime. Zone defense by the Trojans, forced to Minster turnover the last possession. Deep three-pointer by Jacob Stepsholdy. That's two in a row from three-point range for Stepsholdy, and three out of five in this quarter for him. There's a foul on Nixon as Grevy collides with Josh Nixon, and Nixon will get called for the foul, and Grevy We'll get two shots as Minster's in the double, or Bikings, I should say, is in the double bonus. Stetscholdy came into the game just, I shouldn't say just, but hitting three of his ten three-point shots coming into the game. He's had a couple here tonight. That one's short. Substitutions for the Wildcats. Number 10 and number 40, Smeezing and Hilsman. Grevy hoping to hit on one of two. Does so. Nine point Minster lead. Falk with the offhand. Peter Falk had to use his right hand. Beautiful move there by, by Falk. He's got six on the night. A lot of Wildcats scoring the ball tonight for Coach Lee's squad. Pass nearly stolen away. Bergman does retain it, goes baseline, and he will go to the foul line as trying to take the charge underneath was a Wildcat defender. And that foul will go against number 40, Jared Hilsman. So Bergman, again, the leading scorer for the Trojans, just under 17 points a game, also averaging just under 10 rebounds. Makes good on his free throw. He's a 65% free throw shooter, as I mentioned earlier before, Dave. He's a very good shooter from the field. He's five out of five at the line. Two other baskets, so he's going to... Got a good night going here. But he makes points. both free throws. Now 10. And like I said earlier, coming into the game, 56% from the field. and Big free throws by Bergman. Nine-point lead as we're under the final 50 seconds. 
Well, Minster utilizing all five players on offense. I mean, if you're on the court, you're touching the ball at one point or another. Nice pass. Shot was blocked. Toby's shot was blocked. It's retained by Minster, but then turned over. So the turnover by the Wildcats will give the Trojans an opportunity to score. It's a loose ball and a tie-up. And that will stay with the Trojans, so they will maintain possession. Again, another wild series of events there as block shot on one end, loose ball ends up in the hands of the Trojans. They end up now with possession with the final 24 seconds of the half. And it's knocked off of Flores. It looked like Nixon, who has two fouls, got his hand in there to deflect it off of Cameron Flora. And Minster, with the final 20 seconds, will look to possibly go for the last shot. Yeah, Nixon just knocked it out of his hands, and it went off of the Botkins player. And Final 10 seconds. Toby's shot was kind of lost a handle. Jared Toby did go into the basket, able to get a shot off, not a high quality shot. When shot now just four tenths of a second, so it's going to have to be a tip just about by the Wildcats. They get a nice lob pass. Falk at the buzzer. He is fouled. Foul. Boy, excellent play by the Wildcats. I think it was Ernst who threw it in from out of bounds, not for sure, but. On the fly, they, they recognize that. Pass. And it's exactly what they needed. So Falk will have a chance here to put some points on the board with no time left. That first shot is long again, as well as Peter Falk has scored this year. He's left some points on the free throw line. He's had some problems at the line as far as percentage wise. He hits one of two, and the Wildcats take a 10-point lead into halftime. Your score, Minster 38, Watkins 28. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have second half basketball here on NK Telco Sports. to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. Innovation, it's all around us. NK Telco developed a fiber network in our communities over 10 years ago when the competitors were only thinking about it. Increasing bandwidth to make it convenient for the whole family to enjoy online entertainment and gaming. 
With our IPTV solution, you can enjoy over 80 HD channels, providing quality TV and movies for the whole family, and even take them on the go with our Watch TV Everywhere app. All this from a company that believes in local customer service from people you know and trust. NK Telco, providing services that bring value to your everyday life. Our communities are filled with history, culture, and ambition. People who put others first. We are a bank that is defined by what we do, not just who we are. We build relationships. We grow businesses. We support communities. We advise the people that matter most to us, our customers. Stop in at any of our five locations, sign up for internet banking, or download our mobile app to better serve you. We can assist you with your next loan, personal accounts, investments, or business needs. Think first. First National Bank. Member FDIC. Hello? I've been in an accident. My van's not drivable, and I have my kids, and they need to get to school, Ma'am. but I can't. Ma'am, relax. We'll take care of it. Thank you. At Sydney Body Car Star, we don't just take care of your vehicle, we take care of you. With Enterprise Rent-A-Car on site, we get you back to your daily routine with minimal interruptions, returning your car and your family back to normal. Sydney Body Car Star, relax. We'll take it from here. Take a drive to the premier Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram dealership at Bud's in Salina. Enjoy our huge inventory, including the Ram 1500, Jeep, and Chrysler Town & Country. Top-rated Ram dealer in the surrounding area. Convenient six-day service center with Saturday hours, Monday through Thursday until 8 p.m. Bud's has an extensive business link vehicle offering with the Ram ProMaster 4500-5500 truck series. Stop by Bud's today at Route 127 in Salina. Welcome back to Minster, where we're at halftime. The Wildcats on top of the Trojans, 38-28. With your first half stats, here is Dave Helmstetter. Thank you, Jeff. A high energy first half, and uh, for the home team, the Minster Wildcats, uh, the Wildcats were 16 out of 37 from the field for 43% uh, at the free throw line. They were three out of five. On the boards, they had 16 rebounds. They out-rebounded Botkin, 16 to 14 overall. Uh, turnover department, the Wildcats had seven, and uh, compared to uh, 17 for uh, Botkins, Botkins had 17 turnovers compared to seven for the Wildcats. Uh, from the field, Botkins hit seven, uh, seven out of 16 uh, from the field. It's kind of amazing, Jeff, to take a look at the number of shots that were taken. Uh, 37 by the Wildcats and 16 uh, in the first half by Botkins as they were 7 out of 16, which I think comes out to about 40, a little over 40%, about 43% from the field for them. But at the free throw line, Botkins uh, uh, 14 out of 17. Well, the turnovers not helping the Trojans. They, 10 extra turnovers means 10 less chances to score. And you look at the Minshew Wildcats, Although the rebounding margin is somewhat even, Dave, we've saw possessions with Wildcats had two or three looks. Botkins, you know, getting the benefit from the free throw line, taking care of business there, but need to take care of the basketball because possessions seemingly more important, if you will, than free throws because you need to get your shots off and have a chance to score versus turning the ball over. Yeah, with 17 turnovers, there's a big difference there. Driving to the basket is Toombush. And he tries to follow his own shot, a little too aggressive, picks up his first foul. That's something Dave at Minster in the first half got the Trojans into the bonus real early. I know Botkins before the bonus was even in effect, hit some, made some three point plays from the foul line, but Botkins took advantage of those opportunities from the free throw line. And Minster kept sending them there. And one interesting stat, Botkins did not take a Three-pointer. Three-pointer. Well, they're not a very high percentage three-point shooting team, as you mentioned earlier. Did not attempt one in the first half. And we have a foul against the Trojans, number 30, Nolan Grevy. Offensive foul, his third. Minster outscored the Trojans by eight in the second quarter, 20 to 12. So Minster took that two-point first quarter lead and grew it by eight more. They enjoy the 10-point lead right now. Nice ball movement on the interior. Shot missed by Jared Toby. And the Trojans, a little under pressure, throw it away. And it will be back to the Minster Wildcats here. Again, 
somewhat token pressure. And the Wildcats will have another look at it. Minster just had a very good second quarter, 8 out of 15 from the field. Shoot, shot well, good movement with the basketball. Let's see if they can continue it here in the third quarter. Well, you mentioned the good shooting. Some of those eight field goals were three-pointers as <laughs> Jacob Stetscholey connects for his 12th point. He leads all scorers now with 12. As they're trying to trap the half court. Bakken's able there to break it, it, but they throw it away, trying to get the ball to Bergman. Peter Falk wheels, deals, dishes. Off the glass and in. Basket by Bryce Smeezing and Coach Meyer of Bakken's will take a full timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching boys high school basketball on NK Telco Sports. There is no feeling like the one I get when the starter calls my name. Stepping onto the tee box, shaking off the tension of life while teeing up the first drive of the round. Standing there, staring down the pin from 300 yards, everything fades away. Just me, a club, a ball, and 18 holes to push myself to my next best score. Man, I love this game. Welcome back to Minster. The Wildcats, who had a good second quarter, Dave, as we spoke about outscoring the Trojans by eight. They've opened up in the third quarter on a quick 4-0 run. So they're really beginning to put some space between them and the Trojans. Their pressure's been relentless. Coach Meyer took a second time out. Probably a good decision, trying to balance his team or settle them down. And Vikings needs to find good spacing to help move the ball around and avoid the double teams that Minster has been applying. Or been applying. Minster just applies that pressure, and that's the strength of this team, and uh, they're just taking advantage against Botkins. Tough shot by Grevy. It's challenged and missed. Minster with a good rebound, and Grevy will commit the foul from behind as he knocks Peter Falk down. Ball will be taken out of bounds on the sideline. And number 24, Aaron Ernst will trigger the ball in for the Wildcats as we're under six minutes to go in his third quarter. Stet Schulte's jumper off the mark. Bergman with the rebound. And again, the Bakken's Trojans will face a trapping defense. If they can split it, they can probably have a nice opportunity at a Somewhat easy basket, but boy, Minster, even their second level defense has been very good tonight. Bergman gets the ball, wheels, deals. Mm. Offensive foul, no bucket. So that will be the fourth foul, or third foul, third foul on Eric Gravy. Well, Bakken's got some good ball movement, good defensive play by the Wildcats. Yeah, and it was interesting. He took the ball to the basket, which, you know, resulted in the uh, in the charge instead of taking the shot outside, which he was open. Bakken still scoreless here as we approach the five-minute mark. The Wildcats have scored just four, but they had a 10-point lead. To when the half started, there's a whistle, and a foul will go against the Wildcats. Peter Falk will pick up the personal foul as a three-point shot was missed by the Wildcats. For Falk, it's his second foul. Falk will check out with seven points and two fouls. Just under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Floor with the basketball back to Grevy. And the trap nearly, as I mentioned, was trying to get into it. Couldn't get it done. And that time, good ball movement. Luke Bergman finding an open space. And Bergman connects for his fourth point in the first two points of the second half for the Trojans. Loose ball. And Botkin's trying to create a turnover. And it comes away with the Wildcats in possession. Ernst jumps through, and they will call him for the travel. So the big jump stop. 
seen that 10 times. I've seen it called five times a travel <laughs> and five times nothing. So I, it's whatever it looks like, I guess. And turnover will give it to the Trojans, and they will look to capitalize here and try to cut this 12-point lead down somewhat. Pulling camp being challenged up top. Bergman inside. He has fouled on his way to the basket. Two shots coming up for Chad Bergman. And Bergman, uh, good free throw shooter. Tonight he's six out of six at the line, so. Boy, he came in hitting 65% of his free throws, 49 of 75. So that, that'll, six of six, definitely will that. boost that up. Make seven out of seven now. Personal foul went against Jacob Stepsholdy, his third. Bergman now with 11 points. And he sinks both. Bergman with a dozen, a 10 point Minster lead. So each team now has scored four points in the third quarter. Nearly a five count. They were trying to get it closely guarded. Brett Holscher's three point shot, no good. Rebounded by Bergman. So a rough start for the Trojans to start the third quarter, but they have a chance now, Dave, to score six unanswered, and they do just that. Well, in, when you're in doubt, you go to the man that's going to score for you, and, and that's Bergman, and he, there's the big difference inside. Minster has nobody at that size level to uh, to try and counter Bergman, and he makes a nice move that time and, and draws another foul. Well, he'll look to continue his hot shooting streak. That one rattles out, but it's an eight-point Minster lead, and that's one thing you said. If they get the ball to Bergman, he's been very efficient. The problem is it committed a lot of turnovers and have taken that opportunity away from getting it into their offensive player. Lob pass deflected off of a Trojan. Will stay with the Wildcats. So number 40, Jared Hillsman for the Wildcats. In, or coming in for the Wildcats. Ernst, three-point shot, no good. Rebound is controlled by the Trojans, and they will call a travel. So a tough break for Botkins is, again, a physical atmosphere going after the, the rebound, and Botkins appeared to have it, but fell down before they could get rid of it. Smeezing over to Holscher. He goes baseline. Three-point shot, Bryce Smeezing. Again, he came in hitting eight of 10 three-pointers on the season. He's hit a couple tonight. One out of four from the three threes for, uh, for Minster. Aaron Pullenkamp gets a two-point shot. I thought Stutcholy, or oh, maybe Stutcholy. Smeezing hit the last three. Holscher kind of in no man's land had the open look. His shot was blocked. They kick it out to Smeezing. His three-pointer off the mark. Kick violation will keep it with the Trojans. So after somewhat of, again, a very aggressive third quarter day, Botkins has actually cut into the lead. So they've trailed by nine. Again, at this pace, you have to cut into it faster than this. But, you know, with everything that's happened, you'd think Minster maybe would be up by more. But... They are not, as Botkins is hung in there amidst the, the turnovers. Minster now following a Botkins turnover will go to work offensively. Holscher finds a crease and will create a foul against the Trojans. Luke Bergman will pick up his second foul. Brett Holscher. Six foot senior, averaging just over a point a game. Has just attempted two free throws on the season. Misses on his third. And it remains a nine point game. 
Ryan Egbert, number three, in for the Trojans. Holscher to try to make the Minster lead 10 on his second free throw. And he does. Minute 42 left. Ball knocked out of bounds, and it will stay with Botkins. Again, a lot of hands, a lot of bodies around the ball for the Wildcats. Oh. Turnover. And a block shot, but then a rebound by Peter Falk. Holster missed the shot, but Peter Falk there for the offensive rebound. And Minster again capitalizes on a Botkins turnover. Grevy, a nice aggressive move. Eric Grevy averaging just under 11 points, now with 12 on the night. On the dribble drive, a foul called against the Trojans. Grevy made a nice move that time, nice move to the basket. That's what Botkins needs some more of that. And he's having a nice game, 12 points on the night. Yeah, they when they've had the offensive opportunities, they've been very efficient. It's the turnovers that have taken those scoring chances away. It stays a 10-point game as a foul was committed by Fullenkamp, his first. Ball knocked away. Ernst came up with it. It was blocked by Fullenkamp. Loose ball and a jump ball will go to the Trojans. So the Trojans with 62 seconds left in the third quarter. A chance to, again, cut into a 10-point lead. That's where we were at at halftime. And that's where we're at right now. A lot of contact again going down the court. Active hands by Holscher knocks it away. Nice fall by Pete Falk. Boy, somehow he got around there. I had a body in front of me, but number 22, Peter Falk with 11. Very creative around the basket. Minster up by 12. Trojans nice find the open man. basket there. Why well, the referee stood right in my view that time and missed the whole play. I know Roberts drove to the basket and missed it. 22 is at the line. And 22 committed to foul. So foul on Peter Falk, his third. Cameron Floro with two shots forthcoming. He has two points on the night. Make it three. Josh Nixon in for the Wildcats. He replaces Falk. Laura, good on both free throws, 10 point lead. The final 30 seconds here in the third quarter. Minster Dave appears that they will be satisfied with the last shot. Although sometimes that's harder said, or easier said than done. That's right, Botkins is, uh, you know, they're applying the pressure. Under six, they got to go. Ernst pulls up, challenged by Bergman. It was maybe blocked. Jump ball will stay with the Wildcats. Point nine. We saw Minster get a shot with point four off on the clock, so they have a little bit more time here. Another lob pass. Good execution, but coming up empty on the missed shot was Jared Toby. And after three, eight minute quarters of basketball. It's the Wildcats 50, the Trojans 40. We'll be back with fourth quarter action on NK Telco Sports. Independence is something you can easily take for granted. For the elderly and disabled, independence can be especially challenging and require more thought and planning. As a caregiver or family member, how do you keep a loved one active, independent, and safe? Radio Hospital has a solution to provide users and their families with security and convenience both inside the home as well as out and about with the press of a single button. Whether you need assistance for yourself or a loved one, visit your nearest radio hospital location. Welcome back. As we get ready for fourth quarter action, I'd like to go through our sponsors for tonight's game. They are Arrowhead Golf Course, Radio Hospital, Elmwood Assisted Living, Fruiterman Pharmacy, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Keyhole Pizza, Carriage Works, Minster Bank, Minster Dental, NK Telco Sports, 
and NK Telco, our scoreboard sponsor this evening, is First National Bank. Think first. Our replays have been brought to you by City Body Car Star. Our keys to the game tonight brought to you by Bud Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Salina, where the dealer makes the difference. And also at the conclusion of tonight's game, Dave and I will be picking players of the game. For the Bakins player, that's being brought to you by Subway. And for the Minster player, that is being brought to you by McDonald's out of Minster. A fine thank you to all those sponsors that allow us to bring you this. And this is high school basketball tonight. Bakins versus Minster. Fourth quarter action. It's a 10-point lead. That's where we're at at halftime. Floor shot no good. Bergman with the rebound. Tips it to his teammate. And somehow right place, right time. Nolan, Nolan Greedy. Yep. Eight-point lead. Turnover committed by the Wildcats, and then a personal foul committed against Stetsholdi. And maybe, Dave, a good foul by Stetsholdi as Bakken's maybe had dreams of going in for the layup. Yeah, it looked like he had a good shot at a layup there, even though we still had to go most of the court. And momentum the was momentum. taken. And then again, momentum was headed that way for him, and boy, wouldn't that have been a change in momentum here. Because yeah. Minster's been pretty comfortable for the last uh, two quarters of basketball. Yeah, Minster's definitely been in control, and a foul away from the ball. It'll stay, I'm sorry, it'll be against the Trojans. An illegal screen committed against Flora. Each team now with six fouls, so the next common foul, or next foul by either team will put the bonus opportunity in play. Ste or sneezing for three. What well, a good answer by the Wildcats. Smeezing now with 15. Big basket for, uh, for Minster that time, and Bryce Smeezing really delivers on that one. Getting fouled is Nolan Grevy as he was going full speed and was fouled in the act of making the pass. He'll have free throws coming up. Minster foul went against Connor Toombush. Toombush. Bryce Smeezing is putting together a very nice game for Minster. He's got 15 points and a couple of threes here in the second half. Grevy's free throws missed. Minster with the rebound. They come down the court quickly. This is Smeezing over to Ernst. Again, with the size that Minster has, this offense suits him very well. A lot of guys on the court can handle the ball. That time, Ernst loses the handle. But good play by Peter Falk coming down in transition defense. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Smeezing loses a handle on his attempt at the shot. Pass on the interior, scored the basket by number 30, Nolan Grevy. Nine-point lead again as the Trojans just have not gone away. But wow. credit Minster, they've been able to keep that lead about 10 points for most of the second half. Three, four turnovers here in this fourth quarter. Turnover and basket. Camp steals it, Camp scores, and it's a seven-point game. So a big play for the Wildcats is going to the free throw line now will be Bryce Meezing as committing the personal foul is Cameron Flora. Four turnovers here in the first couple of minutes of the uh, fourth quarter for Minster. It's just been a, that's been a big swing here for, for Botkins. And they've been able to capitalize on a number of those turnovers, scoring the ball. Smeezing puts a momentary pause in that streak. Smeezing again, having a nice evening now with 16 points. That one is short. Bergman with the rebound. He's had a hand again on a number of rebounds tonight, has Bergman. Eight-point lead. This is, again, the 53rd meeting all-time between these two schools. Minster leads the series. 33 wins against 19 losses. Driving to the basket, there's a blocking foul. In the last 10 meetings, Minster has won eight of them, including a two-point win last year at Bakken's 48-46. These teams very even 
on paper, Dave, coming in. Each team averaging right around 52, 53 points. And each team giving up around 50, 51 points a game on defense. That was the fifth personal on step shoulder. Wow, I missed that one as the free throws Mitch miss. Step shoulder will sit the final five plus minutes on the bench as Nixon's three pointer is missed. So Step Shoulder fouls out. 12 points for the night. See once how that comes into play, although Mitch has played a number of guys and put it this way, a number of guys have gotten sweaty tonight, <laughs> so it's gonna be shower time for the whole team as Coach Lee has run his troops in and they've stayed fresh throughout. Nice move, baseline. Breakdown in the Minster defense. Eric Gravy takes advantage, it's a six point lead. Falk inside and he has fouled. So Falk has been very creative around the basket this evening. He will be rewarded with two free throws. And he'll look to again improve on his stroke there from the 15 foot mark. That's picking up his fourth foul is Bakken's Nolan Grevy. That one off the mark and Falk Maybe got a little dinged up, Dave, on that drive to the basket. He's been kind of trying to walk off a little bit of a stinger, maybe. Of course, when you don't make your free throws, that little stinger becomes more painful. Misses both free throws. Botkins, boy, big possession here. They haven't been within six in a long time. I mean, they're at six now. They haven't been under six. It's probably midway through the second quarter. They've really worked the baseline very nicely here the last couple of times down. Boy, right guy to get it to. Rattles out just a little bit too much English on it. And it was all but in, and that would have been a huge bucket for the Trojans. Sneezing for three. That one off the mark. And getting the rebound is Eric Grevy, and committing the foul is Peter Falk. So that's going to be his fourth foul against Peter Falk. Minster definitely getting into some foul trouble. This is a big part of the game here. 4.16 to go, seeing the momentum start to swing towards Botkins a little bit, and Minster now has to counter. Well, you already got Stet Schulte that's fouled out. A couple guys with four fouls. Peter Falk, one of them. Grevy makes the free throw. 73% foul shooter on the season. Now with 14 points. Grieve averaging just over 10 points, or should say just under 11 coming in. Short on the second one. Right now, Grievey has his uniform number. Check that, he now has 15 points. 15 for Grievey. It's a five point Minster lead. Nice move to the basket by Hillsman. It's missed though. Minster rebounds and will have a second chance here. Under four minutes to go in the final quarter. Nixon spins, and a block foul will be called against Bergman. Bergman tried to stand in front of Nixon, but not quite a square contact. And Bergman will pick up just his first foul, so there's one bright spot for the Trojans, their leading scorer, Bergman, just with his first foul. Yeah, Nixon, uh, first time at the free throw line. He's got four points on the night. Five of seven on the season. That one's short, so Minster's missed some free throws here. Bakken's missed their last field goal attempt. And Grevy almost forcing the issue. Eric Grevy kisses it off the bank board. It's a three-point game. He's having a pretty good second half. Time Coach out, Lee. Minster. Coach Lee of Minster will take a timeout. It's a full timeout. We'll be back with more basketball here on NK Telco Sports. Find out at Elmwood.
3.37 left to go in the game. This gives us time for Dave to go through our sponsors. Thank you, Jeff. Tonight's game brought to you by Arrowhead Golf Course, Radio Hospital, Elmwood Assisted Living, Schwederman Pharmacy, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Keyhole Pizza, Carriage Works, Minster Bank, Minster Dental, NK Telco Sports, NK Telco bring you tonight's game. Our scoreboard sponsor is First National Bank. Think first. Replays tonight brought to you by Sydney Body Car Star and a keys to the game brought to you by Bud's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Salina where the dealer makes the difference. Thank you, Dave. And again, thank you to those fine sponsors that allow us to bring you this. And this is high school boys basketball. Shelby County Athletic League Bakken's Trojans against the Midwest Athletic Conference Minster Wildcats. Three-point game. Botkins hits six out of seven here to start the fourth quarter. Key stat for the Wildcats here. Uh, one three-pointer, but they've missed four free throws here in the fourth quarter. And Botkins, as you said, six of seven from the field to start the fourth quarter. So good shooting, and Minster's left some points at the free throw line. Whoa, nearly a uh, travel. Smeezing able to get it down. And there is a travel. And Mitchell tried to kind of pull it out a little bit. And the turnover now will give the Trojans, and you mentioned momentum, Dave. They've got the momentum now. They've played, they've shaken off the, the turnovers that they occurred during the first three quarters and have taken advantage. Again, when they've not turned it over, they've been very efficient on offense. And Minster's had five turnovers here to start the fourth quarter. Unusual for them. Fuller camp gets a nice pass from Flora. It's a one-point game. Three minutes to go. Fuller camp's four out of five for the night. Three out of three here in the second half. Ten points for Fuller camp. Well, the Trojans have hung in there. The Wildcats will try to answer their jump shot. 16-footer. By Bryce Smeezing, he's nice elevation on his jump shot. 18 for Smeezing. Pullen Kemp gets it into Bergman. Bergman misses, but rebounds his own missed shot. And Coach Meyer will take a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here and remind everybody that at the conclusion of tonight's game, Dave and I will be picking players of the game. For the Botkins player, that award is being brought to you by Subway out of Botkins, Anna, and the Walmart Subway in Sydney. And for the Minster player, that is being brought to you by McDonald's out of Minster. So again, a fine thank you to those sponsors for, for supporting the player of the game. We've got a number of players, Dave, that have been very much qualified for each team. A lot of guys playing well tonight. It's gonna be hard to make a decision, and uh, Botkins is really, uh, Eight out of 10, Jeff, here in the fourth quarter. And and one of those misses, they just rebound and put back up and right. in. So again, when they don't turn the ball over, they've been a tough stop. It's yeah. getting the ball down the court at times and into their offense where, at least for the first three quarters, was somewhat um, challenging. Yeah, challenging. Shaky, whatever yeah, you want to call it. Yeah. Well, they've really tightened it up here in the fourth quarter with the ball control, and that's resulted in some very good play offensively. Minster will look to answer. They've held the lead since back in the first quarter. Baseline move. Shot was blocked by Bergman as it, Connor Tumbush went baseline and Bergman blocked his shot. Baseline jumper up and in, number 30. Nolan Grevy. Gives the Trojans their first lead since way back in the first quarter. What a comeback for the Trojans. Minster still a lot of time left. And the pass in the interior is tied up. It'll stay with Minster. Minute 31 left. Minster will have the basketball underneath their own basket. Nixon will report back into the Minster lineup. Ernst wearing number 24 will put the ball into play. Hawkins on defense, man-to-man -man style, open look, straight on, three-point basket by Connor Tumbush. What a big basket by Tumbush. His first Over points, three. Yeah. Well, he hadn't made a three-pointer all season, and now he has five points on the night, probably his first three points in the second half, but his first three-pointer on the season. 
The kick violation will keep it with the Trojans. They do have two timeouts left. Minster has four. Each team with nine team fouls. So each team is in a double bonus. Tumba's shot was a big one for Minster, that's for certain. Stolen by Ernst. Nearly knocked away by the Trojans, but Minster does retain possession. Under a minute to go. Wildcats up by two. Coach Meyer shouting instructions possibly on who to foul. They get the interior pass in. I believe it's a Peter Falk, and he is fouled. So in a way, the Trojans probably get the guy they want at the foul line as slow to get up is Nolan Grevy, I believe, or Eric Grevy, number four. That's his fifth. 14 was the injured player. That's Eric Grevy. Falk's free throw off the mark. Grevy with four fouls and what it seems to be, so. 46 seconds to go. Falk buries a second shot, three point lead. Timeout will be called by Minster. Again, a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. A lot of time left, Dave, really for either team. Bakins does not have to come down and, and hoist a three, I don't think. They've been very efficient getting the ball into Bergman. So, you know, they got a lot of time and see what's what Coach Meyer wants to do. Probably a first best shot. Well, one thing with Botkins, they haven't attempted a three-pointer, so yeah, that's probably not that. in their offense. Yeah, knock that off the list. So, I'd say Eric down. Grevy down low. Well, and they've been successful when they don't turn it over, getting the ball into Bergman. Who again, or Bergman. I mean, they've It'll, got a number of guys that have been able to score. Uh, Bergman has 16 points on the night. Eric Grevy has 17. And also in double figures, Aaron Pullenkamp has chipped in with 10. Yep. Well, a lot of time left. Minster kind of backs off on the pressure now, so they'll make sure they play five on five. They go to zone defense. Zone defense. Last timeout was taken by Minster. I think that gives them three timeouts. The scoreboard still says four. Three point shot by Grevy. No good. Offensive rebound by Grevy. No good. Nolan Grevy. And so Eric missed a three-pointer. Nolan got a rebound, missed it. Ended up getting it back, and Grevy scores his eighth point. It's a 30-second timeout by the Trojans. Now we're down to 20 seconds and just a one-point lead. So now you, you got to, if you're Trojans, you think you might want to try to maybe get the steal. And then foul. Mitchell's really struggled from the foul line as of late. Yeah, you're going to go for, try to get the steal and on the inbounds pass. If you don't do that, you foul. Pretty quickly. And well, you've got time. You can even time. try, you know, depending on where the pass goes, if you get a 10-second count, you know, you might as well force the issue. You've got some time to burn. And Minster, I'm sorry, Bakken's down to one timeout. I think the scoreboard still shows Minster with four. I thought they are down to three, possibly. But nonetheless, each team, Dave, is in double bonus. So Josh Nixon, the quarterback on the football team, will have the ability here to throw it in. He'll have the ability to run the baseline if needed. He does so. They get it in bounds and they immediately they foul Connor Tumbush. So the crowd a little excited that Nixon bounced out of the bounds. As long as you bounce it behind the line, you can quote dribble it. So not a violation. And big free throws coming up here from Connor Tumbush on the season. Came in at 10 of 15. Don't know if he's attempted any tonight. I'll tell you what, though. He's hit the biggest three-pointer of the night he for Minster. That's for sure. That's the biggest. Also the first of the season. And he sinks his 11th free throw of the season. 18.6 seconds. Regardless of this shot, it's a one-possession game. Tom Bush had a, uh, had a bat. A, a bucket in the first half and he's had four points here in the fourth quarter that are very valuable. That one no good, two point game. Grevy nearly traveled to get it back. See what's with Coach Meyer, he will let his troops go four drives and he has fouled. So Coach Meyer let his team go, like the momentum, like the energy. 
Floor will be at the free throw line for two shots to try to tie. He's two out of three at the line so far this evening. <laughs> Cameron Floor with four points on the night. 75% shooter on the season from the free throw line. First one is good. Luke Bergman into the lineup and Coach Lee will take a timeout. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here one more time as we're down to the final 6.6 .6 seconds. And remind everyone that our sponsors for tonight, Dave R. Tonight's game brought to you by Arrowhead Golf Course, Radio Hospital, Elmwood Assisted Living, Schwederman Pharmacy, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Keyhole Pizza, Carriage Works, Minster Bank, Minster Dental, NK Telco Sports, and NK Telco bringing you tonight's game between Minster and Botkins. And we've got a dandy, our scoreboard sponsor, First National Bank. Think first. Replays brought to you by Sydney Body Car Star and the keys to the game. Bud's Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Salina, where the dealer makes the difference. 6.6 6 seconds left. Floor to shoot his second free throw. Again, a lot of time left. Even if it's a miss, you got time for the Trojans to foul. Have an opportunity to think about it. That's the timeout, plus a little strategy, I'm sure, from Minster's perspective, if he makes or misses. Floor <laughs> makes the free throw. We have a tie game again at 6.6. And they will put in number five, Jacob Roberts. So the final six seconds underway. Sneezy with the basketball. Pull up jumper. And we have overtime. We'll play an extra four minutes as after 32 minutes, we're knotted at 61 apiece. We'll take a timeout and come back with more basketball on NK Telco Sports. Schwiedemann Pharmacies began serving the people of Auglaise County in 1916 when Urban Schwiedemann purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Overtime here at Minster. It will be an extra four-minute extension of the fourth quarter. Each team will be awarded one more timeout each. And we will re-jump here to start this extension of the fourth quarter, the first overtime. Bakins outscores Minster 21 to 11 in the final frame to draw even and force overtime here at Minster. And the opening tip here in overtime goes to the Trojans. Off the hedge. A Bergman, although in the right spot, right place is number 30, Nolan Grevy. So nearly David turnover results in a nice pass and a bucket I'll tell for Grevy. Nolan Grevy is having a great second half here for the Trojans. There's a little bit of a stutter step as Ernst maybe thought faster than what his body wanted him to. He had the right idea, but shoveled his pivot foot first. Five out of six in the second half for Nolan Grevy. Five out of six, he's got 10 points in the game. Four hit two free throws to tie the game with just six seconds left. Bakins will keep possession and they have a two point lead. A bucket here will give them their biggest lead since way back in the first quarter. It's funny how the momentum changed in the fourth period there. Well, Mitchell commits some turnovers, they miss some free throws, and Bakins doesn't commit turnovers, and they were very efficient on offense. I think at one point, eight of 10 from the field. And there is a turnover. Free throws, a little bit of foul trouble for Minster, boy. 
Yeah, you're right. Lose sure. the momentum in a hurry. Stet Scholey is out for the Wildcats. He fouled out with a few minutes to go in the fourth quarter, maybe three, maybe four minutes to go. I'm not exactly for sure of the time. Smeezing for three, short. Tipped by Ernst, keeps it alive, and going to the basket is Nixon. He draws contact and will go to the foul line. Aaron Ernst that time, who kept the ball alive, didn't get the rebound, but got a hand in there to deflect it to Nixon. And Nixon is fouled, and he will be at the free throw line. Five of seven on the season, again, unless he had any shots tonight. And that might be the fifth foul on a gentleman, Dave, you mentioned was very good for the Trojans, Nolan Grevy. That's a big uh, fifth foul there as Grevy goes out. Grevy does foul out. I believe he had 10 points. Josh Nixon, short on the first free throw. Again, five or seven coming in. Don't recall him hitting a free throw earlier or anything, Dave, so. He missed two. This be his uh, third. Hits the free throw there, a one-point Bakken's lead. Just under three minutes to go here in the first overtime. I'm Jeff Henshin. Alongside me tonight is Dave Helmstetter. And the Trojans kick the ball out of bounds. Again, of all the turnovers they've committed, that one probably the most careless is really not a lot of defensive pressure. They've had two turnovers here in the overtime period and both, only had two in the whole fourth period. And both these, in this overtime stanza, were basically created by themselves. Really no Minster defensive pressure. Hillsman kicks out to Smeezy. Smeezy trying to go baseline. His pass saved by Nixon. It nearly went out of bounds. Three-point shot by Hillsman off the mark. And we have an uh, official's timeout here as player tying his shoe. And we also have Number 14, Eric Grevy doing some stretching. He might be cramping up a bit. He's out there doing some stretching. They back to action here as the Trojans get it into the front court. Pullen can't be hounded by Smeezy. He's going to have to be careful he doesn't get the five-second count. Grevy gets the ball into Bergman. Lost the handle. Loose ball. A nice job by the Wildcats, number 30, Connor Tumbush, to avoid the travel and avoid being tied up. But another turnover, Dave, is, that's got to be at least the third by the Trojans. And Coach Lee will take a timeout, a full timeout. We'll take one with him. You're watching boys basketball on NK Telco Sports. Hi, I'm Bob from the Keyhole, located on 66. We've been family owned and operated for 30 years. Personally, I think we still make the best pizza in the area. I use a special sausage. Cut fresh ingredients, shred cheese every day. We didn't make a pizza to make a profit. We made a pizza the way we wanted to eat it. Stop in, try us out, dine in, or carry out. We also have karaoke every other Saturday. Welcome back to Minster. We have a minute 45 left. In this overtime period, right now the Trojans of Vikings on top, 63-62 over the Wildcats of Minster. And it's been a very entertaining game thus far. Although probably not your cleanest game with a number of turnovers, there's been a lot of action, a lot of up and down, and some big plays by each team tonight. Very streaky game. You know, one team will look very good for a while, and then the other team will look very good. I think... You know, I think Minster, you know, definitely misses somebody like Stetchel. He's very important in that offense of theirs. And uh, he's a, another one, he, he doesn't, you know, six, seven point average, but he's, he's important in that offense. And I think he's a player that they do miss when they run their offense. And you remember, he fouled out in the fourth quarter. Smeezing, thought about it. Nixon. Has it tipped away momentarily. Aaron Ernst for a two-point shot. Off the mark. And it goes off of a Minster Wildcat. So the Trojans with the one-point lead will take the ball with a minute 20 left. And Minster again will start to reapply the pressure. 
Something that earlier in the game was very effective for the Minster defense. Fulhamkamp brings it up. Hawkins goes to work. They find Fulhamkamp open. Bergman open. And there's a block foul as Bergman was going to the basket. Again, good ball movement. Fulhamkamp found his teammate Bergman and also committing his fifth foul. And the second Wildcat now to foul out is number 12, Josh Nixon. So he will join Jacob Stepsholdy on the bench. Both have been disqualified. And for the Bakken's Trojans, Nolan Grevy also out. Jared Toby in for the Trojans. Again, if you see number 14, Eric Grevy, really trying to keep himself limber. He must be feeling the effects of Christmas cookies. <laughs> Bergman's got a nice touch at the line, at least tonight he has. And uh, he's been a good free throw shooter for Bodkins. Uh, but as you look at Minster's stats, they really have struggled here in the fourth quarter and on. They've only had one field goal and one three. So the offense and then their free throw shooting only three out of nine to three out of ten, which, uh, you know, when you start to analyze the game a little bit, you've got to do a little bit more from the field than that. Well, Bergman 0 for 2, Dave, that trip from the free throw line. Big misses, under 60 seconds to go, a one-point Mockins lead. Ernst back to Smeezy. Falk. Smeezy just outside the free throw line. No good. Bergman using his height, keeping the ball above his head. Nice job by Chad Bergman. Minster will be forced to foul here quickly if they don't get a quick turnover under the final 30 seconds. And they do get the foul. And Bryce Smeezing will pick up his second foul. Coach Lee almost out of half court there. Hollered instructions on who to foul. <laughs> Aaron Pullenkamp. For two shots. Bakken's missed their last two free throws. They make good on this one. A two-point lead with 26 seconds left. Mockins four and six on the season. Minster three and three. Full camp, good on both. A three-point lead. Minster under the final 20 seconds now. Under the final 13. Now we're down to 10. It's an amazing shot rejected by Chad Bergman. And coming away with the basketball are the Trojans. Chad Bergman playing a great defensive game as well. And the Trojans will send Flora to the free throw line. Remember, he hit two free throws with just 6.6 .6 seconds left in regulation to tie it. He's going to have a chance here to make one, at least one, would make it very difficult for a Minster comeback with just five and a half seconds left. Yeah, Flores hit his last four free throws. Put the jinx on him, didn't they? <laughs> Four out of six now at the line. A miss here, and Minster has a strong case for a final attempt. Coach Lee will take a timeout. A full timeout. We'll take a quick timeout with him and be back with the final five seconds here from NK Telco Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Welcome back. A big free throw coming up for the Bakken Trojans. They lead by three. If Flora can hit his second of two, that would be a very difficult challenge for the Wildcats and trailing by four with just five and a half seconds left. Yep, Flores got a big free throw here. They, you know, for, for Botkins, the uh, Trojans are two out of five at the line here in overtime. Every point, obviously, in overtime is, is important. And this one will 
would probably mean the game. Four, the second of two shots. Short, Minster will have a chance. They call a timeout. That will be the last timeout. And they will have the ball with 3.4 seconds left. We'll keep it right here as Minster will most definitely, Dave, have to dial up a three-point opportunity. Now, coming into the game, we talk about Minster's three-point shooting. They're connecting on just under 49% as a team. And yeah, they, those, they've, uh, yeah, 48%, 49% from the field. They're a very good three-point shooting team. Uh, probably with the lineup they have there now, probably Bryce Schmeezing is probably the best bet. Schmeezing came into the game eight of 10. Also, Peter Falk is 10 of 23 on the season coming into the game. Now, these guys have probably shot some tonight. But yeah, Schmeezing, 8 of 10. Falk, 10 of 23. Ernst, 8 of 15. So you got three guys there that have hit some shots, shots in regularity. Yeah. That's, that's some good shooting. Now, the difference is, Mockings knows they're going to try to do it. So do you try to foul Minster before they get a three-point shot off, knowing they don't have a lot of big guys, if you will, to line up on the interior to try to rebound, but boy, we've seen Minster being a terror on the glass at times. You know, if you give them a chance to use their leaping ability, that, that could be a tip-in basket off of Miss Free Throw. Or, so I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. We'll but, have to sit back and watch it. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you guys pay attention here with 3.4 seconds left. Clock will not start until it's touched by Wildcat. Ernst gets it. Three-point shot. Off the mark, no good. The Bakken's Trojans have battled back and earned a 65-62 overtime victory over the Minster Wildcats. Ernst had a very good look at it. It didn't drop, and the Wildcats escaped. We'll take a timeout and come back and wrap up here from Minster on NK Telco Sports. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. NK Telco is your hometown provider. We are Northwest Ohio's leading independent broadband company that brings fiber to your home. Larger competitors talk about it, but we've been delivering our fiber network for over 10 years, guaranteeing more bandwidth and services. Over 80 HD channels, Echo Whole Home DVR, interactive channel guides, in demand, internet based phone systems, and local news and sports channels. Innovative, futuristic, and cost effective. Welcome back to Minster, where we witnessed a wild one here on this Monday night. The Bakken's Trojans win a three-point game in overtime over the Wildcats at Minster, 65-62. And with our final game stats here is Dave Helmstetter. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, well, the Bakken's Trojans, it's a tale of two halves. The second half, especially the fourth quarter, uh, considerably better. They're 22 out of 36 overall for the game. Uh, 0 for 2 from three-point land. 21 out of 31 at the free throw line. They had 33 rebounds 
and committed 26 turnovers, 17 of those in the first half. And I would note also on the shooting statistics in the second half, Botkin shot 13 out of 21 for 62%. For the Minster Wildcats, they were 24 out of 67 from the field, 6 out of 16 from three-point land. And uh, one that will haunt them for, uh, for this game at least, they were 8 out of 18 at the free throw line. And on the rebounds, uh, they had 23. Uh, so Botkins out rebounded them 33 to 23. And turnovers for the Wildcats, they had 14. And in the second half uh, from the field, the Wildcats were 8 out of 24, 25 for a 32%. Um, scores, leading scores, those in double digits tonight for the Botkins Trojans. Eric Grevy, outstanding game. He had 17 points, 6 out of 11 from. Uh, from the field in five out of seven. Chad Bergman uh, also had 16, as well as uh, Aaron Pollenkamp had 12, and Nolan Grevy had 10. And our player of the game for uh, Botkins is Eric Grevy. He pretty much hit it right on the head. He did a lot, made some big shots down the stretch for the Trojans, and congratulations to Eric Grevy. That award was being sponsored by Subway. And for the Wildcats, taking a quick look at the, their scores, Bryce Screezing, uh, also, our player of the game for the Minster Wildcats, he uh, scored 18 points, uh, 7 out of 17 from the field uh, to lead the Wildcats tonight with 18. Jacob Stetschulde, uh left the game with foul trouble in the fourth quarter, but he finished with 12 points. Peter Falk also had 12 points, and those were the leading scores for the Wildcats. Fall to 3-4 and four on the season. Botkins goes to 5-6. and 65-62. Six, Botkins a winner in overtime. Well, for the Trojans, good thing happens when they don't turn the ball over. Only nine second-half turnovers. Not many of them even came in the fourth quarter. That's where they had a great shooting. And Mincher committed some turnovers in the fourth quarter. And you add up some missed free throws. That left the door open, and Botkins took advantage of it. And came in here and, and won a tough game on the road. And, uh, and both these teams... Battled well and said it was an exciting game. I think you said it best. Both teams played in streaks, had some good play out of each team in moments, and then the other team kind of you know turned the table on them, and we had back and forth action. It was a it was a good game to watch and a good game to broadcast. Botkins played very strong in the fourth quarter and into the overtime. Just uh, took it right to the Wildcats, who uh, seemingly had a comfortable lead, or at least we thought. And uh, just a little bit of foul trouble, little problems at the free throw line, and before you know it, that. Big Mo changes and it, it changed. Fourth quarter, Botkins outscored Minster 21 to 11 to earn the tie, and then the overtime period outscored Minster four to one. Not a lot of offense in our final four minutes, but uh, outscored them to earn the victory. So the Trojans go to five and six on the season. The Wildcats go to three and four. I'd like to thank our production staff tonight, our camera people. We had on the floor Kurt Kuffner and Andy Bundy. Our center court camera was Daniel Allen. Production guys to put this telecast together for you were John Quahorse and Matt Everidge. For my partner this evening, Dave Homesteader, I am Jeff Henson. We hope that you enjoyed this telecast. Once again, your final score, Bakken 65, Minster 62. Thanks for watching.